Hey you guys, it's Lisa and I'm so, so excited because one of my best friends in the whole entire world just had her baby. If you remember my video for my baby cake topper, this is a glitter cake topper I made out of acrylic for a baby shower that I still haven't given back. She asked for it back like four times. Well, baby girl is here. So I am making this cute little hello, my name is sign. A lot of you know that the newborn picture trend is just growing and growing. So I wanted to make a cute little sign for baby girl, Catherine, to make her appearance in the world. So I'm going to be designing this from scratch using Silhouette Studio, and we will be using our Glowforge to cut and engrave. Now, if you like this design, but you don't have a Glowforge, there are two things that you can do. One, I will be offering it as an SVG, so you can use that, cut it out of vinyl. That's the end of it. But if you are looking for a Glowforge, there's no time like the present. So go ahead, check the link in my description on how you can save up to $500 on a new Glowforge. Okay, so I am in Silhouette Studio. I'm going to be designing this hello tag for you for, from scratch. Now, one thing to note is actually, this is my second time doing it. First time I set it up the way that I typically would, but turns out Glowforge takes files a little bit differently than I expected. So I'm gonna go ahead, start from the beginning, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the outline of my sticker. So the sticker has the rounded corners. So I'm gonna go over to the left side of my screen and do this rounded rectangle. So we're gonna draw a rounded rectangle, pretty standard whatever sticker size you want to do, all right? So that's the first part of our design. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set this up the way I want it to be, but I'm going to do an outline around it. So when I'm done with this design, my outs this part right here will be etched in certain areas, but I need to set up um, my design to have a cut line around it. So it's basically gonna be a print area and then a cut line around it. So we're gonna go over to the offset tool. It's right here with the star. And we are gonna click right here for offset. So this makes a line around my shape. I actually want my offset to be really small because I want it to look like the etching goes all the way to the edge. So I'm gonna highlight this right here, type in 0.02 hit enter, and now you can see it's really close. I'm gonna go up to the top left corner this button right here, and I'm going to change the line color to purple so you can see the difference. So here's my original red, and here's my purple line. So we're gonna set that to the side. We're not gonna need that for a little bit. Now we need the open area in our design for the name. So let's go ahead, draw our little square, and what I'm gonna do so I can visualize better is I'm going to select this right here, make this white, so right now you can see that it changed. Let me hit Control Z. A lot of times people will think that, that shapes are white by default, but they're actually just an outline. There's no fill to them at all. So if you click on this shape, go right here, click white. Now you can see those lines are gone because we have that background. And I'm gonna click on my bottom one and I'm going to change this to black just so I can visualize. So I wanna go over here bring it like that. And honestly, I think I want to make my entire square a little bit longer. So I'm going to select both my original and my offset because I want them to scale at this. Well, let me take that back. I am going to delete my offset because I'm going to make this um, sticker a little bit taller. So I'm going to drag this down just a little bit. And before I do any more modifications, I'm going to click on this and repeat it. Do an offset, do 0 0.02. Hi friends. This is editing Lisa, I met on my Lanai. Um, I'm interrupting this to say that I didn't like how it turned out when I did point zero two. You want to do a larger offset. I recommend staying with the default point one two five that Silhouette does. You can kind of adjust it, but point zero two was too small of a sliver. So try to do about point one two five. Bye. Hit enter, and then change my line color to purple, and get it out of here. Oh, I didn't want to get that one out of here. Sometimes that happens when the lines are so close. So now I'm gonna bring this down a little bit and decrease that a little bit. Because what I want is I want my sticker to have this area up here and then that tiny bar on the bottom. So now we're ready to start typing. So we're gonna start with hello. And I just hit Control A to select everything in here. You can also click off, click on, so you just have this dark line. Double click, you have this green 
line around it, which means you're in text edit mode. You can drag your mouse to select everything in there, or I like to do control A. So let's go over to the right side. We're gonna change our text. Uh, the font that I'm using is called Arvo. So we have it right there. And I'm going to make this white just to make it easier for later. So we have that one, we have hello. And now I'm gonna make a copy of this. So I'm gonna hit control C, control V. So there's our second line, control A, my name is. So now we just need to do a little bit more adjusting. I'm gonna make this bold by clicking bold right here. And we're gonna stretch this out. So I want this to be about the same size. Now we're going to adjust this, you know, to fit in that space. All right, so we have, hello, my name is. I'm gonna go ahead and convert this out of text mode. I want them to be treated as objects. So I'm gonna select both of these, right click, make compound path. So now these are a shape. You can double click, you have cut lines in there. Now, if you're using a script font, which I will in a minute, you can't do that right away. You're going to have to weld to get rid of those overlapping lines. So let's go ahead, set this up in here. I'm going to select both of these, go up here in the quick access toolbar, and we're going to do our align tools. So right here at the top, I'm going to align middle, make sure that's in the middle of my sticker. Good, and now we can do our name inside. So before I do the na my name inside, I'm going to separate parts of this shape. I realized when I started making things a compound path, which would make it a, a one object in Glowforge, what would happen with, is that Glowforge would take this entire bottom part and just ignore that I broke out this middle part and it tried to etch a big black circle. So I don't want that. So we're gonna go through, select, my square, both squares. You wanna make sure this, this uh, middle part is on top because we're going to do a modify. We're gonna go to the modify panel, hit subtract. And what this will do is it'll take the bottom, the top shape and cut it out of the bottom shape like a cookie cutter. So we'll hit subtract. You can see that these are two separate objects. We know that because they have boxes around each other. So just be very careful not to move anything. And we're gonna repeat the same process with this hello on top. So you can see the hello is still a different object. So we're gonna select the whole thing, subtract. And one thing to keep in, in mind, and you probably noticed it with this last one, whenever you uh, subtract from something, it breaks it apart. So you can see that zero, that little inside part moved. So I'm gonna hit Control Z, and I'm gonna select this whole shape, and I'm gonna hit Control E to make this a compound path. So we have that set over here. Now you just need to take these two objects and group them together so you don't misalign them. Right click, group, or Control G, and now we're ready for our name. So this is the part we customize. So if you are doing this for future orders, at this point, you wanna kind of bring this around and save your file like this so you have your base. And now I'm gonna type my name. Baby's name is Catherine. I'm gonna hit Control A. And now we're gonna to go to our text style and I'm using a font called Bogart. Let me fill it in. And the reason why I did this uh, font is I like that it had this scratchy look, almost like someone wrote it in pen. So now we're gonna put this in the middle. I'm going to grab both of these again, go back to our align tools like we did before and align that in the middle of my sticker. And honestly, I think that's pretty good. Now, one thing you need to remember, let me take the fill off to show you, is remember what I talked about with script fonts? These letters are overlapping, so you can see where they overlap right here. If you do not weld it, those lines will cut, which means you'll have like a weird white space in the middle of all your letters. So if you right click on it, you can weld it, check it out, those lines are gone. You can see though that you have an extra box around the K. That's because these are separate objects. You wanna right click, make compound path, so that is one object. And let me put the fill back on so I can visualize a little bit better. Okay, so now we're pretty much done. I'm gonna take my entire design, right click, group it, and I'm gonna make sure all of these have the same line color. So since this whole thing is grouped, I'm gonna take that, go to my line color, and I'm going to change it to another one just to be safe. So I'll make it green. There's my green lines. And now we have this outline that we made a lot earlier. We're gonna select both of these shapes. And right here is you can center each shape on each other. 
and they're going to perfectly align because we made that outline off of our original shape. So now this is all set to go. I'm going to hit control G to group it. And now all we have to do is save it as an SVG. So the way that you would do that is you would select your design right here, go to file, save selection, save the hard drive. And once you get to your options, you just change this to SVG and then you're all set to go. So now we're going to go over to the Silhouette, not the Silhouette Studio, that's where we are, to the Glowforge software to set up to cut and engrave. Okay, so I'm using this medium basswood plywood. You can see there's my QR code. I'm using proof grade material. Uh, you know, I've already used this, so I want to keep using it because it's still a good piece. So we're going to go over, close the lid, and now we're going to let the software read it. Okay, so my design is here. I have this right here set to engrave engrave cut you can see engrave cut here it read my qr code so i'm using medium basswood and now we're going to print okay so we have the name tag done so one thing to note about proof grade material is that it comes masked okay so that it has this protective like paper on it so it doesn't char so it's counterintuitive because when you're not like sure it looks like that it's super charred, but it's really the paper. So we're gonna go over here, peel off this masking. You can see it looks nice and beautiful. So in case I forget to mention, I forgot to mention earlier, this is for the baby that I made the cake topper for. So make sure you go ahead and check out my cake topper video on my channel. Um, I had a lot of fun making that. It was super cute, in my opinion, if I do say so myself. But I'm really excited because now I can make stuff with baby girl's name on it. So I'm just going to go through. And look, this looks way better, right? And I'm going to finish taking off this paper off camera, and then I'll show you this a little bit closer. Okay guys, here is my finished product. Now this is a quick throw the wood in the glow forge and go kind of project. I've seen people online who have painted these, who've done a lot of really lovely things. Uh, I'm not gonna do that for this one. So I had a lot of fun. This is something that I designed in Silhouette Studio. So leave me a comment below if you want me to give you this base design as a free SVG. I'll do it if I get enough comments and likes. But this is super, super easy. I did this with my proof grade material, so it was easy and a breeze, but it's super simple. You can do it with other materials as well. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit subscribe. I'd love for you to see the tutorials and the videos that I'm putting out for you and leave a comment below. Do you want more of the cutting side of this or do you enjoy designing as well? I would love to hear what kind of work works best for you.